literally going all over. Oh my God! No! No way, no way, this can't be right. This can't be right! Hello guys, it's me, Nikki. Hello. I look like I haven't showered in seven weeks. <laughs> This hairdo has a great meaning behind it because in today's video, guys, sit down. You're probably sitting down, but if you're not, sit down because we're in for a treat with this video today. <laughs> so I've been doing YouTube for more than a decade now. And if there's something that people always ask me to do is to do a makeup video inspired by decade makeup. So they're like, oh my God, Nikki, do a look inspired by the 1960s, darling, Brigitte Bardot. Or you know, Nikki, do a, like a 1990s look, like Spice Girls It Out, like do like decades. Decades! So I really wanted to start doing this maybe as like a series and looking at today, it is the 20s. So I wanted to start off with the Royal 1920s. So The Great Gatsby, The Flapper Girls. I think you have seen this iconic makeup and hairstyle by now where it's all about like dramatic eyes, lots and lots of crazy blush, gel down hair with like fluffy curls. It's like poodle chic. How fun would it be if I knew an expert when it comes to vintage makeup and the vintage makeup trends? And what if that expert taught me what would I look like? if I myself lived in the 1920s. For once, you get to go back in time, look at the techniques, play with the techniques, and see what you will look like. Well, guess what? I have found that expert. <laughs> in today's video, makeup artist slash vintage makeup expert, Erin Parsons is helping me out. I have worked together with Erin a couple of times now for Maybelline, and she is one of my top favorite makeup artists on the planet, and she just radiates makeup knowledge. She's basically like a walking makeup encyclopedia. <laughs> also has the most mind-blowing, gorgeous vintage makeup collection that is actually from the decade that it's inspired by. So if you ask something about 1930s makeup, she has a whole sort of like showcase of products from the actual 1930s. She bought them, they're authentic from that time period. It is, it's like a little makeup museum and I'm so, so, so in love. So Erin is coming to the rescue for today's video and she's gonna teach me all about the 1920 makeup look. Now something that also has to tie into the whole 1920s theme is, first of all, this is the first time ever wearing something so low and deep cut because as you know, I got a little help with my girls. And while I was recovering, there's one game that I played nonstop because of Mama Tutorials and that is June's Journey. I know this sounds like a stretch, but I'm not lying to you. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game set and also the 1920s. It's a free to download mobile game where you have to find hidden objects in like a beautiful 1920s set theme. Let me show you. Okay, so I opened June's Journey. It's made by Wooga. Whenever I have downtime, I play this game and I'm obsessed. This is my island. Look at my island. <laughs> okay, so let me just do my daily tasks. I have to get my coins real quick. So first of all, the main game is the hidden object game. So that's where you press the little play button. I'm currently at level 32. So basically you open a game. There we go, it's loading. And it's gonna show you like a beautiful scene set in the 1920s. You can set this to your language. Okay, so in the middle, Dutch word of the day, it says part. Part is horse. So that's right there. Chow is a scarf. That's right there. We have hert, that is a uh, deer. That's right there. Then we have stool, which is chair. That's right there. Zwart. Oh God, I don't know where the, ah, where is it? I can't see. Where is that bl blade? Sword. Got there in the end. Ah, oh, I found it. There it is. So then it gives you points. I have a scoreboard with a club that I joined. <laughs> Nikki Toots, back to my island. So the main game is finding these hidden objects. Then also, once you like earn your flowers and your points, you get to create your own little island. Like right now I'm building this like little water park here. Doing this, like building your own little island is so peaceful and relaxing. I love it dearly. I am highly obsessed with June's journey. I am, I'm sorry about it. So whenever I'm like not online, 
not living my makeup life, no, I'm June's journeying up in this house on the couch. I highly recommend you downloading June's Journey for free in the description box below. I have a little link for you where you can download it. June's Journey is available on Android, iOS devices, and even through PC on Facebook games. So what are you waiting for? Maybe you can search me up and we can like exchange flowers and stuff. So now that we have all the links, all the ties into the 1920s makeup look, it is time to do my makeup authentically as if I lived in the 1920s. This is gonna be bad. <laughs> all right, it is time to see what my face would actually look like if I lived in the 1920s. And just to, you know, give you a little introduction, it's rough. <laughs> Like my makeup part is like intrigued, but also shocked. <laughs> because when it comes to like the placement of blush or other products, it will shock you. Like the beauty standards were so different. Like, and don't even get me started on the brows. Just wait for the brows. Erin, like I said, has a beautiful, beautiful collection of true authentic vintage makeup. And just looking at her little museum of makeup is so inspiring. Like I didn't even know that mascara looked like that. I'm shocked. So let's see what Erin has to say when it comes to foundation. So let's talk about foundation. So um, in Hollywood, they would use grease paint to do the foundation, grease um, paint. but it wasn't really marketed to sort of the regular society. So most uh, people would just use loose powder. Concealer okay. didn't really exist, but no I think uh, pancake foundation launched and that was sort of like a a powder that you would wet and you could use that like a foundation. So I do oh. think foundation can be used for this. Okay. If you want to try grease paint, go for it. <sighs> okay, grease paint, literally, you could see it as Vaseline mixed with like foundation powder to get like a greasy, painty sort of substance and that could be used as foundation. But also, like Erin says, pancake makeup. Now pancake is sort of like this water activated thick powder that you wet and then it kind of dries on the face as a powder. Not necessarily two types of foundations that I gravitate towards. <laughs> I think the closest thing I have to grease paint foundation is this little, this is ancient. I've had this for I think 15 years. I don't know if I should be using this on my face. This is like, you know, grease paint like, this is like a cream foundation. This looks like it could be from the 1920s. <laughs> so I could use this as my base. There's a TV paint stick by Kryolan, but that's more like a cream product. I also really like that idea of taking a face powder and wetting that and sort of using that as a pancake makeup. Um, I think I wanna just do both. I'll do anything for more coverage. You know this by now. I don't think there were necessarily a lot of brushes or anything. Um, I think a lot was done with the hands with a puff sort of like that. You know, brushes weren't really a thing. A lot of powder puffs existed, but not brushes. So I'm just gonna use a puff to kind of smear on the grease paint foundation. I'm gonna break up from this. <laughs> Now, like Erin mentioned, loose powder was also definitely a thing. What I just realized is that uh, for the brows, there's a whole different story because Erin also sent me articles from back in the day, like actual books from back in the day where there was, there was like a printed makeup tutorial. And I'm looking at this eyebrow page right here and it, kind of gives you a guide on how to do your brows. And it says, pencil out the eyebrow line. Why is it British? <laughs> pencil out the eyebrow line. Have you too delicate type of eyebrow that does not curve completely to the corner of the eye? This kind of an eyebrow does not bring out the contour of the brow or makes the eyes as effective as they should be. Thank you. If you cannot grow more eyebrows by using Vaseline and oil applications, take an eyebrow pencil that matches your eyebrows in color and extend the line of the brow where it would naturally grow. This applies to me. <laughs> Carry out the arch of the brow carefully, keeping the line as thick as your natural eyebrows and making the line light enough so that it hardly, British again, <laughs> and making the line light enough so that it's hardly detectable even in your own mirror. Notice how your expression changes and your face gains in width. Don't want that. <laughs> Eyebrows are very important because they govern the expression of your eyes. Hey, 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 okay. How to train your eyebrows. If your eyebrows are unruly and apt to get out of alignment, train them to stay in place and grow together by brushing each eyebrow 
with an eyebrow brush. Okay, tips for the girls, honey. Okay, teach me. Wiry, bristly eyebrows may be softened by using soap on the eyebrow brush or by smoothing them with Vaseline. Now we'll get to the actual brows later, but what you see a lot with the brows in the 1920s, and it's shocking, I know it's shocking. They're very straight, and then where we would naturally like softly arch them, or like nowadays we just pull them straight out, they like scoop down. They're like whoop, falling down, whoop, falling down. <laughs> So this brow is gonna be intense. Now I'm happy that this article from back in the day says that you can use any color that you like, but most of the inspiration pictures I see, that's a, a black stripe that's going downward, a depressed little brow. So first I'm gonna take some eyebrow glue and kind of glue my brows down and then kind of cover them with a little bit of the grease paint foundation so that after I can really live that 1920s sort of brow fantasy. It was a long ass introduction, I'm so sorry. Okay, so we're taking a bit of the brow glue and we're just gonna tame this unruly brow. Honestly, the shape of my brow, I've been told by many people from the industry, remind people of like a 1920, 1930 brow because it's so thin. And every time someone tells me that, I'm like, thank you. I'm gonna take this as a compliment, even though my insecurity will take this as an insult. So we're not really brushing up like we're doing nowadays. We're just brushing them in one thin little stripey stripe. Okay, then tame them. This is not my journey. Oh, that is not my journey. So funny how I think brows are some of the most iconic ways of identifying a decade when it comes to makeup trends. I feel like, you know, in the 1920s and the 1930s, they were so thin. And nowadays we're like full on. Uh, this is horrifying, but hey. It's the 1920s. <laughs> okay, now that they have kind of been tamed, it's time for the foundation. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna take the grease paint. Oh my God. With my puff and we're just gonna even out the skin. <laughs> oh my God. I am gonna get a rash from this product. It is so old. Okay, honestly, I thought I was gonna hate applying this with a puff. It is definitely sort of highlighting any dry patches I have on my face because you're literally dragging it on. I mean, sadly, there wasn't any Nimia back in the 1920s to get rid of dry patches before you start it, but hey, it is something. <laughs> Let me just cover the lips too. Can you imagine if they had, I don't know, YouTube in the 1920s and we had like all the flapper girls doing like makeup tutorials? Wouldn't that be so iconic to just see how they would do it back in the day? Of course, now we have these articles that tell you what to do, but like how did they actually do it? Let me put it this way, comment down below what decade, what year you will go back to just to like, look around and kind of take it all in and just see, you know, how the cookie really crumbled. I think for me, I would go back to like the 20s or even like the Marilyn Monroe period. Like I would love to see that. <sighs> but makeup wise, I'm happy that we live in today's, today's world because whoa. <laughs> she is greasy. See that shine? Ooh -hoo -hoo. Moving on. Okay, Erin, next up, okay. Okay, bronzer and highlighter. So bronzer did not technically exist, but in the 1920s, supposedly Coco Chanel fell asleep in the sun, got a sunburn, then a suntan, and suddenly having a suntan was very popular. Like I said, she and knows everything. Some, I think the bronzer would be okay to use because they were- Oh, hallelujah, we can use bronzer. Products. Now, as for highlighter, uh -huh. there was no highlighter. Um, you know, people would usually contour with rouge, sometimes maybe with a gray eyeshadow or like the grease paints. But I think um, things that I have read are using Pond's cold cream okay. or like a Vaseline on the okay. eyelids or the inner corner of the eyes. But I've never seen any cheekbone highlighter, not till oh, the 1960s. Sad, sad, sad. Okay, so no highlighter. I can use a bit of bronzer. You know what? Just to stay close to the actual like authenticity of this look, I don't see a lot of like sculpting bronzer like contour wise i did see this article though that aaron sent to me and let me read it to you they did have a little trick for if you have a double chin it says eyeshadow on the double chins this makeup for a double chin should only be used in the evening when artificial light is particularly kind to shades and shadows that is so fascinating too and aaron will tap into this later on as well 
how day makeup had to be totally like perfect for daylight, but like when it was candlelight or evening light, there's more shadows so you, so you can like kind of get away with more. Take a little smear of eyeshadow, purplish or blue, and spread it very thinly over that swell that doubles the chin. I feel attacked. This was directed straight to me. <laughs> this won't, of course, correct the profile. <laughs> But full face, it will help to diminish the appearance of a second chin. <laughs> like the 1920s came back to read me. They did it. All cosmetics should be put on over a cream foundation to look their best, since much depends on their dissolving and sinking into the skin to give a natural appearance. Foundation cream or lotion should be used on the chin as well as the face before the eyeshadow is used. Done. Powder should be used over it and great care taken that the powder matches the skin of the neck, which is often a shade or two darker than the cheek powder. In making up your chin in this way, be sure to turn the artificial light on your face so that you do not make either too lightly or too heavily. Move a lamp around in two or three positions to be sure you have achieved the effect you wished to obtain. They are playing with light and I love that. Okay, a purplish bluish shadow, which is the cream because they basically didn't have powder eyeshadow. Everything was cream back then. So I'm mixing some gray grease paint with the grease paint foundation. And we are gonna get rid of the double chins that we have. And I'm gonna start blending that in with that puff. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Kind of looking like a beard now, but we can blend that out. Ah! Wait, this works? What? I mean, it might be a little bit too cool for me, but if you like diffuse it a bit more, that is a snatch jaw. Okay, snatch chinny any. <laughs> wow. Okay, now that we've done the cream foundation, the double chin is erased. Let's focus on the brows a bit more because I feel like that's a key feature of this look. So for the brows, I'm seeing like a straight brow and then bloop down. And like I just mentioned that little tutorial, I'm just gonna see what I can achieve here. <laughs> now for brows, they actually did use a lot of Maybelline brow pencils back then. And Erin also mentioned that that same pencil is still available nowadays. Okay, I'm just gonna take my regular brow pencil because they tell you to use your shade. And I'm gonna keep it as flat as I can and then they just go down. And that is even too much of an arch still, like down. Following the width of my natural hairs is exactly what I'm doing and I'm just pulling it down. The brow period was not my period. Like that was not my journey. Oh my God. This by no means, no means is a brow that I'm proud of. Like I would have been physically in pain if I had to have a brow like this. So when it comes to eyeshadows, they didn't have shadows. They had like eye creams. They had like creamy products. And Erin even shows you a couple that she owns. And some of the colors are actually delicious. Like I would love that nowadays. So an article that she sent me is cosmetics for the light blonde, which would technically be me. Because of the blue and white lights on the platinum blonde hair, you should choose Vivid Cosmetics, which will bring out the color of your hair, eyes, and complexion. Eyeshadow, choose the eyeshadow that is nearest to the color of your eyes. For the blue-eyed blonde, blue and gray are used. For the brown-eyed light blonde, there is brown or purple eyeshadow. In the evening, only in the evening, you may use the eyeshadow that has flecks of gold or silver through it. So uh, I guess I would be considered blue eyed blonde. So for me, that would have to be blue and gray, cream shadow, cream eyeshadow. Now, I don't really know how they applied this, I guess just with fingers, which I hate. Okay, mixing that together. Okay, let's see. We're just patting this. Okay, I'm gonna just use a brush real quick. Nobody look. Honestly, I kind of dig this. Like it's kind of a mood, like playing with a cream product like that. It's kind of a vibe. I think right now the creams are kind of making a comeback. Remember when Miss Nikki Toots herself, me, was against cream blushes? Ah! I hate a cream blush and now I can't stop using it. So that already shows you how trends change and trends come and go. Now I can hear some of you thinking, but girl, is this gonna crease? Yes. When you have just cream products, no primers, no powders to set it with, this is gonna crease. So you best believe that the beauties back in the day had a sickening crease. Okay, I do wanna see what a little bit of Vaseline on the inner corners will look like as a 
I lied. And she said that people would use it on their lids, which means even more creasing. <laughs> lids. That is, I like that. It's very sexy. Like a greasy lid is sexy to me. All the people watching this go and like, nothing sexy about a girl. You are delusional. This is not sexy. See, it kind of has that like that, oh, I've been sweating in this. It's it's gorgeous. Live on the inner corner. I don't know how I'm gonna put this on my inner corners, but like that. Oh, I did it. I look like I've had a rough night. I don't have that type of mascara where it's like a cake mascara. I don't, I can't use that today. Um, so I think I'm just gonna move straight to lashes. And for lashes, the ones that Erin showed are, first of all, super long. They're like all one length and it's like a strip. So it's like an actual strip lash and it's one straight lash at the same type of length. And uh, surprise, surprise, I don't really have a lash like this. I think the closest lash that I own that kind of looks like that lash is by Tati Lashes. It's called Foamy. Um, and I'm gonna put these on because the fact that these kings and queens and beauty stars all wear a lash, especially in Hollywood, I am here for it. So I'm gonna put these on and then we can move on towards the most shocking part of this entire video, which is the blush. <laughs> It's like someone turned the lights off. It's, it's, it's dark. Okay, let's scroll back to the rouge part. You will find a bright red rouge like American Beauty will form their desired contrast with light hair. When I look at the picture itself, almost all the blush is not placed here where we place it nowadays. Literally, the blush goes in like a, a moon shape here towards the inner portion of the eye. It's like basically, an eye mask. Like when you're taking a day off and you take like a nice little eye patch mask, that's this in blush. They say, the placing of rouge as illustrated above is the trick of a famous French makeup artist. We oui, we. Oui. For those who are over 30 years old, it works wonders in erasing the marks of time. Now I just turned 28. Should I be listening to this? <laughs> take the right color rouge according to your natural coloring. Don't color outside of the lines, and place the rouge directly under your eyes, well, up the side of your nose. And when I look at blush, they did actually have powder blushes as well as cream blushes, so I, I'm gonna opt for the powder for this one. So it really goes under, oh my God. It goes under the eyes and up until here and really going all over, oh my God, no. No way, no way, this can't be right. This can't be right. Wait, when you look at the actual photos, like look at this, it's what they did. I know this is a painting, like this is an illustration, but this is what they look like. Sort of blended down towards the center. Like if I look at all the photos, like look at her. It's all the way, oh, it's all the way down there. Under eyes and down, under eyes and down. Oh, no, 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 no. I am gonna like tame it a little bit with my puff to like save this, I don't even know. Let's make it like a little bit more of a haze, I guess. They say that the 1920s was the best for if you have dark circles, cause you will just cover it with blush. You know, if you are tired, it's okay because there's blush to fix you. Oh my God. It's almost in a way contouring the face. Do you see how it's kind of giving me shape? Shape of an apple, but it's shape. <laughs> is this where apple of the cheek comes from? Because it makes your cheeks look like an apple? Is that where it comes from? Now for the lips. Lipstick must be chosen with reference to the rouge, for it should vary only in intensity. The lipstick should be American Beauty too, and used heavily. If however the mouth is large, Beware of spreading it all over the lips. And when I look at the shape, um, Erin taught me that for the sides, they kind of went inwards and then really exaggerated the cupid's bow, like really made it heart shaped and kind of doing the same on the bottoms. And I should match the color to my rouge, which is red because I'm blonde. So really exaggerating the cupid's bow at first mm -hmm. and then keeping it small as you go down. See how it kind of like swoops up and down, see that little, kind of looks like McDonald's. <laughs> Pull that in. Ah, that's nuts. That's crazy. Oh my God, that's, I love that. I love that. I look absolutely crazy and I love it. 
<laughs> I would have stolen every single heart back in the day. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I just, I look like a damn fool, but somehow it works. Somehow it gives you that 1920s, roaring 20s flapper girl feeling. Strangely enough, I'm obsessed with it. Not necessarily because the makeup is that beautiful. I mean, look at the brows. I can get behind the blush and the shadow and the lip and the little beauty mark, but those brows, I feel like if I would do, oh, well, the lashes are bad too, but I feel like if I would do like a modern take on this, I, I see the potential. Now, sound off in the comments down below. Would you rock a look like this? Would you take factors of this, like portions, elements of this and tweak it towards a look nowadays? If so, what are those elements? Cause I wanna know. <laughs> Shall we do a Dutch word of the day? Of course we shall. For today's Dutch word of the day, it is vintage. Antique. Um, tique. This makeup look is so antique. I'm in love with it. Well, it's growing on me. <laughs> Don't forget to leave the Dutch word of the day down below in the comments, Antique. Mix it around in your comments so we can have the Glow Babies unite. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. I wanna thank June's Journey so much for sponsoring this special, special video. Thank you so much, Erin, for all your knowledge, all your, like a peek into your makeup museum because I am obsessed. Let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a big thumbs up if you want me to do more decades. We wanna make Erin make a comeback and teach us more about the 30s, 40s, 50s, 70s, 60s, 80s, where does it even stop? So if you want to see more of this series, definitely give this video a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for more. I love you so much and hopefully I will see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Looking a little bit different. I love you so much. Bye!